thing. My name's Debbie Wimberly. Let me just introduce myself here. We're kind of far into this, but I'm Debbie Wimberly. <laughs> I am a I am a patient. There are myself. no formalities here. <laughs> I am a patient myself. I was abandoned by my doctors during the opiate crisis because they didn't want to prescribe me with the prescription they'd been giving me for decades because they felt they were going to lose their license. So I found myself wound up in that system, which was created by man. Just must be real. And then all of a sudden I was sitting on the curb with no one to help me. And I kept begging my doctors, can somebody please help me? And they're like, eh, we can't help you with this because, you know, this is, especially if it was one of my specialists, that's not our, that's not our field of study. And it wouldn't have mattered. They wouldn't have helped me anyway. Yeah. And it's like, and I'm sitting here with a serious lung condition going on. We don't know what it is. I'm in a wheelchair. Can't walk for myself because I have a ruptured tendon. I'm on oxygen 24 hours a day. And I have a 24 hour caregiver because I cannot take care of myself. Yeah. And then I said, okay, I'm going to learn how to use cannabis because that's the only option I had. I lived in a federally legal state. I mean, a, a state that was like, it wasn't federally legal. It's still not. We need to fix that. But I was in a state that's legal for medical. And so I started trying to figure this out. Before I could figure that out, I found myself laying in a hospital bed, unable to breathe for myself, fighting for my life because I was abandoned by my doctors. Now, uh, let's say I wasn't very happy about it then. I'm happy about it now because I get to live the life now I have. And I never knew I would get to see this life again. Never. And for three decades, I gave doctors the opportunity to do the thing I have accomplished by understanding yeah. my endocannabinoid system and learning how to use cannabinoid therapies. So I'm willing to open my medical records up to anybody because it proves my point that for decades I stayed sick and continually was in and out of the hospital. And now I'm eight years in, I haven't been in a hospital since 2016, which is truly remarkable with the health that I was in. And how many times I was in the hospital fighting for my life. My husband never wants to see those days return again. And this is an important message. And the person that's in the office next to mine when they're visiting their doctor that has the same health conditions as me should have this information, but they're not allowed to have it.